Hello, 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 everyone. This is your girl, Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes, and I want to welcome you to Conversations from the C-Suites. As you know, we always like to start with the power of three. So I encourage you to make sure you invite at least three people because we want to have a conversation and we can't have a conversation by ourselves. So make sure that you are able to get some people into the conversation. So I'm going to do that myself. I'm going to take a few minutes to share. And I just want you to make sure that, again, you invoke the power of three. So hang tight and invite. And I'm going to do the same because we've got an awesome show today. I'm so excited. I'm always excited, but especially excited today. All right. Okay, so I've got got some folks I am inviting here and then we're going to get this party started because I'm ready to have a great conversation from the C-suite and there we go. I've got it started. All right, so let me share it out some mo <laughs> I'm going to keep sharing it out here. All right, so I have, I've invited some folks. So now let's get it started. Well, hello everyone. I am Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes and it is my pleasure to be here with you in the C-suite for another great conversations from the C-suite, the girlfriend's guide to being a CEO. I tell you, this has been an awesome day. It's been a long day, but it is always great to end the day with a great conversation. So, of course, I am your host, Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes, CEO of C-Suite Women's Network, where I help women and a few good men to be the CEOs of their lives so they can be better CEOs in their businesses. And as the CEO of your life, you are able to develop strategies to achieve the results you desire in your business, career, and your life. Because you know every woman deserves a seat at the table. Every woman deserves and needs to be the CEO of her life. Because when you are the CEO of your life, you are able to make the choices that enable you to not only have a seat at the table, but to make your own table and bring others along as well. So Conversations from the C-Suite is a power-packed hour where we give you a platform to share your business and career experiences. We want to elevate your mindset and compel you to take action because CEOs don't just wait on things to happen. They make great things happen. So make sure you got your favorite beverage. I got some wine tonight. I tell you, it's been one of those days, but I am so glad to be here. In the C-suite, of course, this is where the decisions are made and every woman has a C-suite in her life. And in the C-suite, you are the CEO that makes the decisions about the great things that you are going to have happen to you. So you want to make sure that, you know, regardless of where you are, you may be a CEO on the rise, just getting your start. You may be a CEO on the move. You've made a few CEO moves, but you're ready to make more. You may even be a CEO. You've got this thing down, but you want to take it even higher. So here, Conversations from the C-Suite, the Girlfriend's Guide to Being a CEO is where we have powerful conversations about real things that matter to real women. Because you know, life doesn't end when you leave the office. But you know, we want to do more than just talk. It's not just about the conversations, but it's the moves you make. Here in the C-Suite, we want you to Feel something, learn something, do something, really make those CEO moves, create those circles of influence, educate and empower yourself to elevate you to the next level and opt operationalize what you learn so you can 
optimize your outcome. So of course, this is indeed a conversation. So make sure you have invited someone to come along because we want them to hear this great information. And as I told you, I'm so excited about tonight. Tonight, I am um, just elated to have my dear friend out of BC, out of Bawale, who I have known I don't know, two or three years now, but feels like we've known each other for a lifetime, but she is a powerhouse and awesome. So I hope you are ready because whether you are a CEO in a business or the CEO of your life, you are always in the position to make great moves. So let's get ready to talk about some strategies to help you to capitalize on your most powerful asset, which is your power of choice. So are you ready? I hope you are. Well, you know, tonight, as I mentioned, we've got my dear friend, Ida BC, Ida Bawale, who is going to help us to achieve the empty nest without emptying our wallet. Because, you know, we have to send those kids off to college. But we don't want to send all our money off with them as well. You know, the cost of college education continues to rise and it takes planning, saving and applying for scholarships to make sure that you don't go bankrupt trying to get your children's bankroll started. So we want to make sure that we are not the lit embodiment of my child and all my money go to school, <laughs> go to college. So I am pleased to bring to the virtual stage none other than Ida BC, Ida Bawale. I'm getting ready to bring her up. She is a speaker, coach, and the world's only upliftologist. And I tell you, she is uplifting, uplifting. And so let me just uh, finish reading you, letting you know about who she is. She's going to tell you a little bit more herself. But she's the founder of the higher education technology firm, Upliftology, referred to as the master of upliftment. Uh, I can't even talk. The master <laughs> of upliftment. Maybe I've been in the wine too much. I don't know. Ida BC helps young scholars and leaders find their voice and purpose in order to best maximize their potential and turn their dreams into reality. She has made it her mission to help college bound students attend and graduate college to achieve their educational pursuits. Get this debt free. So I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about who she is. We've got Ida BC. Welcome to the C-suite. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Stephanie. You are amazing. First of all, I love the way you say my name. Every time you say it, I was smiling. <laughs> Girl, I've been practicing. I've been practicing. Ida BC, Ida Bawale, yes. <laughs> okay. Every time someone says it and they practice my name, they say it just like that. It's so funny. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is so melodic. You know, <laughs> you know, my name just was Stephanie Barnes. No melody, nothing. You know, you got the out of Bawale. You know, you got all that. You got all that melody going on, girl. We got to bring that to the. <laughs> so I love it so much. I love it so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so appreciative. Well, awesome. It is so great to reconnect. Y'all, we have known each other for a long time. We haven't actually talked to each other in a while. So we're going we're gonna to try our best to be focused. But I can't promise you that we won't get a little bit off off, uh, off track here. I will but, try to keep us on track too. Yes. I, I will do that. Yes. Well, welcome to the C-suite. And the way we like to start is I want you to tell me the who, the what, and the why. So I've shared a little bit about who you are and what you do, but we want to hear from you. So tell me, who you are, what you do, and why you make the CEO moves that you do. Thank you for um, the introduction. You pretty much said it all in the intro, but to dig a little deeper, I am the founder and the CEO of Upliftology, where we help college-bound students prepare for the college application process and to graduate school debt-free. And the whole premise of this organization is simply, I was having so many questions from children and my teenagers in my church, Mm -hmm. teenagers in the community asking me how did I let it happen for myself where mm -hmm. I went to the George Washington University twice uh, for, first for my undergrad and then secondly for my master's mm -hmm. graduating one of the most expensive universities in the nation debt free so they would ask how did you do it how can mm -hmm. you help me and a lot of parents would do the same help my child do the same thing that you did and it, it it's just a also it's just a mindset yes it's a mindset it's a 
decision to know that I'm going to college, but also a decision to know that I need to have somebody else pay for my education yes. because I cannot afford it. You know, yes. a lot of parents are earning the amount that it costs to send your child to college for one year. Yes. And the reality of it is that parents can send one child for multiple years at one college, let alone having multiple children, send them for four years to right. multiple different right. colleges. Yes. Cause so, I, I, uh, cause that, that is such a, a reality and, and such a, um, seemingly, um, you know, op a seemingly big obstacle. Cause, you know, I just think about, you know, I had undergrad at law school and mm -hmm. then I went back to get my PhD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, oh my gosh. Exactly. Wow. So, yeah. So, so imagine college is now costing 72 upwards of 72, $75,000 for one year for mm -hmm. a 17 year old child. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it, it begs Ridiculous. the question, even though this is this is really a rhetorical question, but gosh, you know, does it pay to go to college? I knew exactly <laughs> where you were going to go. I knew exactly where you're going to go. Yeah, you know. And you know what? The funny thing is that I even talk about I'm going to be talking about that in my TEDx talk, which I have coming up next week. Yeah. Next week, Thursday. Yeah. So it, it, it's a rock and a hard place because I went to college. I loved my college experience. It was phenomenal. I was at George Washington for four years undergrad, stayed on campus, had phenomenal time with my friends and my and my sororers. Hey, I never listen, let me put, let me show this cup real quick. I'm drinking my ginger ale for oh, my Oh my gosh. See, I would be sitting at I would be sitting at my desk. <laughs> I'm trying to think, where do I have some AKA something? Because I know she didn't just pull out that white <laughs> stuff on my anyway. You know I did it. Yeah, yeah. We're looking at your pink wall. We see your pink wall and your pink jeans. Yeah. That's okay. We love you in red, though. Girl, I make red look good. Yes. <laughs> this is excited pink, honey. <laughs> oh, I missed you so much. I know, I know. I miss you too. Like I, I said, I told y'all we we're gonna get off track. I told y'all. But anyway, I miss you so much. We but no, your TEDx, your TEDx uh, talk, and how mm -hmm. you were focusing on, you know, the expenses of college. It's in, in so expensive to the outcome. Because you know, the the thing I always think about, you know, not only the expense, and and definitely, I love education and mm -hmm. believe, you know, incredible part of our learning and a part an incredible part of our development and, and definitely an advocate for it. But, you know, these days when you have, you know, uh, you know, young people who recognize, you know, there are lots of different ways now to achieve, to attain wealth, to, to be a, a productive citizen, actually be a part of the marketplace and the workplace um, that you don't necessarily learn in college, you know, right. How do, you know, if, if, if you're talking to someone in there, Weighing the cost of my gosh, I going to pay what it costs my mom or what my mom makes the entire year just for me to go. I mean, as a salary, just for me to go to school one year. Why should I go? How can I do this? You know, what should I do? What and you have you you're having so many children say that nowadays, and it's just kind of like, especially to be honest, especially if your skin color is this, you're just like, mm -hmm. yeah. if you're gonna if you're going to say that. That's perfectly fine, right? Because the reality of it is, am I going to get the return on investment of cost mm -hmm. and time if I go to a four-year college mm -hmm. and not get the job that I was expecting, not get the the outcome, the salary that I was expecting? I'm going to be earning less than what it cost me for one year mm -hmm. to go to college in a year? That doesn't make sense. But the reality of it is, we should be having these conversations. Is it better for our child to go to trade school? Is it better for them to take a gap year and go into the workforce to figure out what exactly they like, what they don't like to see if it's worth it for them to go and study biology, mm -hmm. engineering, mathematics, or whatever they want to study mm -hmm. before committing to a degree. And I think one of the worst pieces of advice, and I've been saying it for years, and I will say it loudly and proud on your show right now, that any adults can tell a child is you do not know what you, you don't need to know what you need to study or what you want to study in college. Mm -hmm. You do not need to know what you want to study in college. You just need to know you want to go to college. That is horrible advice. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because now colleges cost $50,000, $60,000, $70,000. That is an expensive, <laughs> that's an indecisive expensive decision. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you're saying that, oh, I can go into debt for, it doesn't even be nice and say that we have a 35, a half scholarship and uh -huh. we're just paying for, for half scholarship, half tuition and the room and board. You're saying that all I need to do is pay $35,000 to not know what I want to study. Yeah. 
when I can figure that out for free and possibly have a job that will pay me as I figure that out. Right. And you're speaking to the person who, who changed their major like eight times. I changed my major eight times. Are you serious? I am dead serious, girl. I've changed my major eight times. But the good thing is I did all of this because I really, I thought I knew what I wanted to do. But mm -hmm. then, like you say, when I got there, I'm like, oh no, this is this is not the deal here. Because I, yeah. I wanted to do engineering. Mm -hmm. And largely because all of my best friends, it was four of us, uh, that were really great friends that, uh, and all of us went to the same school. One was an electrical engineer major, computer engineer major. I think two electrical engineer majors, uh, a computer engineer major. And I loved chemistry. So I was like, well, I'm gonna be a chemical engineer. Yeah. And I get there and I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not taking all these semesters of physics and yep. this is just really not what I want to do. And it really took me eight tries before I landed on English. Wow. Uh, but I didn't waste my parents' money, fortunately. I had a scholarship. And, and, and fortunately, I did all of this my sophomore year, so I didn't really lose any hours. You know, I right. had to be committed. But I can imagine, you know, what if I had gotten three, four years into it, almost ready to, uh, you know, graduate? And I'm like, this is not what I want to do. So I, I, I definitely agree that that is kind of the worst thing you can tell somebody is mm -hmm. you don't need to know. Uh, what you want to do because college is a year of, is is a time of discovery, but yes. it's an expensive expedition. <laughs> right. And it's just getting more and more expensive. It's getting more and more expensive. Salaries are not increasing. Cost of yes. living is increasing. Yes. So imagine coupling that with multiple years of college, multiple years of financing, it, uh -huh. and you're just compounding all these other all these other factors into your livelihood. Mm -hmm. But you're not making more money. Right, right. You're getting more tangible skills on the job. You're not getting more of a, a guarantee that you're going to have financial freedom one day. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I mean, you even said it, you lucked out being one of the, one of the few people who yeah. were able to do it within four years still. Yeah. 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 I graduated on time. That's my claim to fame that I grad that you, I changed my major eight times. And I graduated on time. <laughs> you have no idea. You probably do have an idea actually how many students change their majors oh, yeah. even once, let alone yeah. eight. Yeah. And still they, they're on the five year plan, the six year plan. Seven, I have good friends who I graduated undergrad 12, uh, excuse me, I, undergrad, I graduated undergrad eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I still have friends who are still in college, which means they've been taking 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yep. gosh, they don't have an undergraduate degree yet. <laughs> oh my word. And have been, in, you know, have taken a break here and yeah. there or have taken um, uh, little gaps, taking one classes at a time mm -hmm. because one thing or another. And it's just kind of like, when are we going to be able to start the conversation to help people discover what it is they want to study so that they can do it more distinctly, more at, more directly? Mm -hmm. These little hair, these little breaks here and there is just perpetuating the problem that we have as a, uh, as a nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, according to Forbes, the USA is over $1 trillion, $1.5 trillion, actually, in national student loan debt. I can, oh, I believe that. Oh, I, I definitely believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely believe that. And the worst thing is that now, student debt, I'm sorry not to cut you off. <laughs> student debt is the one debt that you cannot bankrupt out of. Right. You can't discharge in bankruptcy. Nope. Yep. So you stuck with it. The only way you it's get horrible. The only, reason, only way you can get rid of student loan debt is to die. And, and you know, this, this is kind of not helpful. <laughs> it's kind of not it's helpful. It's so dude. bad. And one thing that people negate to know is that if you, even if you take out a loan for one year or let alone one semester and you stop going to school, guess what? Sally's coming for you. Yep. Sally. You're gonna May. get you're gonna get that interest. You're gonna get that that financial debt incurrence. Yeah. Whether you whether you graduate or not. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Tell, tell me about it. <laughs> tell it's so me. bad. All right. So, you know, so we you know, we know that it is expensive to discover yourself in college, to discover what you want to do in college. So if you have a young person, say they're 16, 17, junior, senior in high school, they get ready to, to make these decisions. They don't know what they want to do. What is it that you do that helps them to make a more informed decision? You know, how do you guide, how do you guide parents in guiding their students in trying to make a decision around this? It's such a one, that's a wonderful question. And the reality of it is sometimes parents don't really know their children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a great relationship with your child, but sometimes parents are not digging deep enough mm -hmm. and asking the right questions or they're asking too late. And it's just kind of like you could have been nurturing this talent. You could have been nurturing this ability all throughout high school. 
-hmm. in middle school and elementary school, even yeah. when you start seeing the talents, you start seeing the attributes and abilities that the child has, but now you're waiting until they're a senior and you realize, oh wait, are you going to college? Or oh, you are going to college. In fact, you're going to go to college. Yeah. Now let's start. Why? <laughs> you, you know this was a part of your hopes and your aspirations for them. Why not begin to nurture that ability and discover that okay. in them when they're young? Yeah. So when they're going to high school, that they're they're nurturing that whole mentality. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out what I want to study. So as for a, a student, him or herself, the reality is that you want to start having these open and honest conversations as a parent and also as a mentor mm -hmm. or even a guidance counselor. You're here for four years in high school. Mm -hmm. It's the preset to discovering yourself. Mm -hmm. Take this time to take take classes in engineering to really understand what you, to really understand what engineering is. A lot of people get into the subject and don't realize how much math it is. Yeah. The math, they have no the clue. The math was cool, but the physics, yeah. Yeah. People don't understand that yeah. there's segments to engineering. People don't understand that there's segments to English. People don't understand that there's segments to, to business. Business administration is a very broad topic. Mm -hmm. What aspect right. of business do you want to study? What right. do you want to make, make your niche? Right. You know, so right. we start having these honest, open conversations so that they can start to discover and start to think outside the box because mm -hmm. you might hear that, oh, IAB is an entrepreneur. Dr. Stephanie is an entrepreneur of her own company. But you have no idea how many hours I work. There's yeah. 24 hours in a day. And everybody says, oh, if we have 24 hours in a day, like Beyonce, we can build these brands. Yeah, Beyonce has a team. I'm a solopreneur. Yeah, right, right. So I'm up to 3 a.m., yeah. waking up at 6, 7 o'clock to do my morning prayer, get straight to work by 10 a.m., go work out, come back to work, eat lunch, take a break. I mean, it's a whole rotation of things, but are you cut for that? Yeah, right, right. Right. You know, are you cut for being a doctor? Are you cut for being um, an artist? Whatever it may be, everybody has their own different skills and their own different attributes. But when you see somebody else and that, and that who inspires you, you want to emulate them, but you may not be cut for it. Right. Right. So, you know, the, the thing I hear from you is that it's really important for parents to have this discussion early rather early. than their junior and senior year. Um, you know, how early right. is too early? You know, what is the ideal uh, time frame that these that parents need to have ha start having these conversations? The ideal time frame to start having these conversations when a child is going to middle school. Ah, so it's like seventh, eighth grade, sixth, yep. sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Yep, about 12, 13, because that way they start to nurture their mind. Mm -hmm. What is it that they start to they, they begin their discovery phase? What is it that I would like to do when I grow up? Mm -hmm. You start paying attention to the adults around you. You start paying attention to what they say they do, how they carry themselves. You know, even take, for instance, Greek life, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us were, were um, ex oh, excuse me, what's the word I'm looking for now? <laughs> Most of us were initiated. No, no, not initiated. Oh. Um, exposed. Excuse me. Exposed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, exposed. Yeah. We're exposed yeah. to Greek life mm -hmm. from a parent, from an aunt, from an uncle, mm -hmm. from somebody who is influential in our life or big sister. Mm -hmm. For me, it was my big sisters. Mm -hmm. I was in middle school. My mm -hmm. sisters went to college and I would see them with their sorority sisters, with their lion sisters, mm -hmm. interacting with them. I wasn't necessarily thinking about it, but I was exposed to it. So That's now right. it's in the back of my mind, right? right. I, I witnessed it. Likewise, with people in their careers, you hear parents talking about, oh, I work for this embassy. I'm a mm -hmm. international affairs coordinator. I'm a public interest administrator. Mm -hmm. Things like that. When you start having, that's why you see people who have generational lawyers in their family, why right. people have generational doctors in their family, mm -hmm. why people have these high class jobs or these things that, that bring prestige, that bring the family fame or even politics, you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. When people are exposed to it and they, they see the value in it, mm -hmm. they appreciate it and they go after it. Yes, yes. yes. So it's yes. never too early. So even parents who discover that their child can, can sing at the age of three. Right. Because, you know, one of the things with that. That, I, that I try to do with my children, because, you know, especially having gone through the experience of changing my major eight times, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted my children to have a different experience. So, you know, one of the things that I did with them was I think middle, probably, yeah, starting around middle school was exposing them to summer programs where yep. they would have access to you know, different industries. Um, one son, I think he did, he did a leadership program. The other one did a sports um, management program. And that was a lot of fun for him, but he just got a chance to see different things, but they've done, you know, they, they got a chance to do 
Um, the other one uh, also did medicine. He thought he was interested in medicine. So we sent him yeah. to a, a medicine camp or, or camp for students who were interested in pursuing medicine. So he could see if this was something he really wanted to do. And that ended up not being what he majored in. So, mm. you know, it's it. I, I do think it's, it's so key for parents to begin this discovery process and facilitate it as much as they can yes. so that at least kids have an idea. It's not, not ever going to be picture perfect where they get there and like, okay, you know, I still, this is the major that I'm going to do because there are lots of different influences yep. that may intervene even between, you know, their early exposure, but at least they probably have lesser chance of, of changing it up eight times. <laughs> yeah. You know, because that, that is a bit, a bit excessive. And uh, it I, is, but I, it's, it's what you needed to do to get right. to your. Right. Because I truly was, you know, just discovering different things because mm -hmm. it was it was chemical engineering. Then it was marketing. Then it was transportation. And I remember <laughs> I called my dad. Yeah. Well, I called my dad and told him I was going to major in transportation. He didn't say it. Then he told me later, like, oh, Lord, I'm sending this girl to school to be a truck driver. But <laughs> but transportation is the logistics of goods uh, uh, around the country. So that's that's what <laughs> that's what. Uh, Dad, dad will still say, oh, so you're going to drive the truck? Yeah, he says, it's like, I'm sending you to school to be a truck driver. I could have just got you a CDL or something, you know? Oh. Why, why am I doing this? But let's see, transportation, and it was communication. <laughs> then it was it was speech, speech pathology. It was special education. And then uh, I think I, I think I was in a business for just a second, and then, and then English. So those were my eight. <laughs> You literally ran the gamut. I was in all the colleges, all the different schools. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you did that all in one year, you said? No, this was over two years. So this two was years, freshman and sophomore year. Freshman and sophomore year. So by the end of sophomore year, I finally got it figured out. But I, I truly was in that discovery process because I didn't know. Because what I thought I wanted to do was just not what I wanted to do. So, but I commend you for figuring out. The problem that a lot of students have is that they don't figure out early enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of, if you look at the stats of people, when people drop out or when people get stuck in their educational pursuits, it's that junior year mark, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. itch, you know, when they're, they just make the 50%, they just got off, got through their GCRs, they're going into the crux of their, their majors, yeah. they get stuck the junior year and a lot of students drop out. Their yeah. One of the things that annoys me Mm -hmm. As someone who's seen people go through their college education, is someone who drops out their junior year. Yeah, it's like you're almost there. You're almost it there. makes me want to pull my crochets out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why? You are 75 percent done. You are more than half. You have one year. Yeah. So it, it just breaks my heart when that that child, that student, doesn't have that support mm -hmm. or encourage encouragement that they need to to graduate. And it's to, it's usually for money reasons but the reality of it is still is that with proper planning you can manage that yeah yeah so so parents those of you who are out there listening you know that the key thing here is having this discussion early mm -hmm. and and exposing your children to different types of of industries of yes. of, of careers so that they are better positioned once they do make a decision on college to choose a major that is more likely than not going to be the one they graduate. Because one of the things we've we've shared here, and I hope you've taken away from this, is yes, college is a time for discovery, but you don't want it to be an exorbitantly expensive expedition. Right. And the more and the earlier you have the conversations with your children around, you know, what do you think you might want to do? And and you know, helping them to navigate that process, the better selections they'll make. And I'll just kind of put this a little aside in there too, kind of to highlight this, you know, it is really very important parents, if you don't want to waste your money to truly allow your child to decide what they want to major in. Because mm -hmm. if you make them major in something that they're not interested in, one, that's just incredibly unfair to do that to someone, to force them into a, a whole life, a whole lifestyle that they're not interested in, mm -hmm. but it makes it, you know, that much more likely that they're not going to complete it. They're not going to finish it because as soon as it's hard, if they don't have the passion to keep through it, to push through it, then they're, they're not going to continue. So, you know, talk to your children early, expose them to different career paths so that they can make informed decisions and make sure that they are actively involved 
in their in the in the selection so that they're well positioned to to complete their college studies. So before we switch over to what we really want to know is how you went to school debt free, I do want to just take a moment and bring you a word from our sponsor. Tonight's episode was brought to you by C Suite Women's Network, where you can learn how to be the CEO of your life so that you can be a better CEO of your business. C Suite Women's Network offers professional and personal leadership development strategic planning, and organizational and performance excellence strategies. There, you can develop excellence through training, coaching, and accountability support for your goal execution. The mission at C-Suite Women's Network is to equip women to be the CEOs of their lives, to use their education, experiences, and influence to create the life they desire and deserve. So be the CEO of your life, go over to www.discovertheceoinyou to schedule your free strategy session today. So speaking of strategies, mm-hmm. how'd you do it, girl? How did you <laughs> go to school debt-free? We want to know. And crying minds want to know. You're so funny. So <laughs> I will say that I was in a good position to to know that I didn't, I didn't have, I was not going to get the money that I needed to go to college for my parents. Uh, for my parents. And the reason why I say that is because one, I'm the youngest of three girls mm-hmm. I'm born to immigrant parents from Nigeria. So my sisters had gone to college um, at Catholic and American universities mm-hmm. respectively, which were fairly expensive universities. They're private institutions. At the time they were what, uh, high thirties, mid forties, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And I saw my sisters go through the college application process. They had to apply for loans. They had loans. Mm-hmm. They have loans. Um, yeah. <laughs> they have present tense from their, their studies. So I will never forget my eldest sister asking me, have you ha- have you applied to scholarships? Like, I, you, you're done with your colleges, but you did you figure out the financing? And I was just like, ooh, I you're right. That. <laughs> yes. And here's the thing. I had it in the back of my mind, but the action was not there yet. I hadn't done what I needed to do. Yeah. So I literally um, remembered a couple of scholarships that I saw when I was a junior in high school, but yet couldn't yet apply to because I was a junior. You need to be a senior. Mm -hmm. And the one scholarship that was the game changer for me, that was the icing on the cake, was the Gates Millennium Mm -hmm. Foundation scholarship by Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates, Mm -hmm. where it covered the balance of my college college educational expenses. Mm -hmm. I had money from the George Washington University, smaller scholarships, including the alumni award. Mm -hmm. Um, the federal Pell Grant, other Mm -hmm. small things here and there, but Gates Millennium covered the balance of my expenses, which was a blessing from heaven above placed in my lap. I mean, it's that simple. You know, it was a very tedious, it was a very, very, very tedious application and not necessarily impossible of doing. It was just long. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was just a long application. It was easily as long, if not longer than some of the college applications that I completed. So in short, that's how I was able to go to school for free. Uh-huh. And graduate debt free, and I had amazing financial aid advisors. My dad went with me in my first year. Mm-hmm. By the second semester, I think it was even in my freshman year, mm-hmm. kept in touch with her. Had a great relationship with my financial aid advisor, mm-hmm. which a lot of people do not know to do. Yeah, go and talk to them. Make them your friend. Make them your very best friend in the um, in the offices of the the college that you go to. But even more importantly, understanding how much each college costs. Mm -hmm. One thing that I discover every time I talk to students, to some of my clients and uh, those who become my scholars, who are my clients. Mm -hmm. If you ever talk to some students, they don't know how much colleges cost. And I'm just like, did you think that they're just going to let you in for free? It's a business. College is a business. It is a business. It's a business. You know, even even to apply to it costs money, let alone talk less of actually getting in. You know, so it, it's important that parents are having these open and honest conversations with their children. And I will caveat and, and conclude the statement by saying parents have those honest and open conversations with their children, because the reality of it is parents are not being transparent with their children about how much they can afford for their children's education. Dr. Stephanie, looks like you froze a little bit.
girl. But I don't know what happened. Okay. Yes, we're back. <laughs> All right, we are back. This is persistence. I was determined. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. Okay. Okay. So we yes, are back. back. We are All back. Right. I thank you. We are back. Thank you so this much for being patient. I, I think we have a little bit of feedback. We do. Okay. okay. We are back. We are back. I think. Oh, you know what? The other page was up. <laughs> Got it. All right. So here we go. So this is persistence. This is what CEOs do. We make <laughs> make CEO moves. You know, we get kicked out the C-suite. We're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm going to climb my way back to top. I do want to thank y'all for sticking with me. For some reason, my internet connection just decided to drop. It's been on all day. But hey, but we got it back. I had to log out, log back in. That's right. Here I, I, saw your, I saw your I saw your smile freeze and I was like, uh oh. What, what yeah, happened? Yeah, because I was like, uh oh. I was like, who's frozen me or her? And I'm like, I could see it on my screen. I'm like, okay, she's talking. I'm not. So let me figure this out. But we got it together. We got that's it. Together. That's how you do it. All right. So, all right. So, let, <laughs> there was a rewind. There was a rewind. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> You were talking about the uh, the tedious process of the application for, your, for the millennial scholarship. Mm -hmm. You were saying that it was almost as long as, um, at least that's the last thing I heard you talking about, this college yeah. application, but just kind of going through that process. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it was just a very long process. Um, what I was, I, what I concluded was with was a lot of parents are not open and honest with their children about one the expenses yes. mm -hmm. of what it's going to cost for them to go to college, but two, how much they themselves can afford right. to send right. their children to college. And it's a big, big, big misconception parents are put it, providing their children with because a lot of students, and I've heard it before, that, oh, mom and dad got to cover. Huh? Mm -hmm. That yeah. you, you, you don't even know how much the school costs and you know mom and dad has to cover that, I'm sure. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm sure that they didn't they didn't realize how much it costs to go to Harvard for a year. It cost, cost to go to even University of Maryland, from out of state for a year. Mm -hmm. You have to take those things into consideration. Are you going to a private institution? Right. Are you going out of state to a college? Mm -hmm. Are you going out of state to a state school? Because that price is going to look different for you as a right. out of state student. Yeah. Are you going to stay within the state and go to a college? But are you also going to a college that's now highly ranked? Mm -hmm. Because the tuition is going to rise compared to when it was. Five ten, let alone what mom and dad when mom and dad went to school, right? You know, right. so yeah, all those things are factors, mm -hmm. and a lot of parents negate those little factors. Yeah. So, so tell me, you know, you have your program Uplithology. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do, and how do you help parents with this process? Because you know, I have one one son in college, and another that's going to go, and I tell you, you know, just even just that whole process just wrapping my head around. And even when I went back to school myself, you know, it can be such an overwhelming process. So overwhelming. What is it that you do that helps to alleviate this, this process so that it is not so burdensome and it, and, and students and parents don't have to do it by themselves. I am a liaison for parents and students, but also a liaison for the student and the school mm -hmm. in the sense that I help students one, figure out what it is that you want to do in college. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to go to college? Mm -hmm. Are you going because mom and dad said so? Are you going because you have a desire? Mm -hmm. What career path are you leading towards that you actually want to discover yourself mm -hmm. and that college is going to help benefit, help mm -hmm. you benefit towards that path of pursuing that career? A lot of students are not asking those questions. They just know I need to go to college because of the expected route. Mm -hmm. It's the expected plan. That's what you do after high school. Mm -hmm. But a lot of students also are not taking into consideration consideration that I need to start preparing my finances, my financial mindset for how much it's going to cost for me to go to college for the next four years to graduate with a bachelor's with a, um, with my degree, or in some cases where some students do the two year associates and then go into pharmacy school. Mm -hmm. What is the route that I need to take? A lot of people are not looking at the bigger picture. They're not looking at the whole story. They're looking at the next step, but you need to start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. okay. So I help, I help parents and students look at, for, look at the bigger picture. Okay. So when you're working with a student about how long does it take? Because I know we talked about parents needing to start having this conversation like in middle school. 
you know, mm -hmm. when do you typically start working with a parent and, and their student and getting them on this process? Because a lot of people haven't yet understand or have not yet familiarized themselves with the understanding mm -hmm. of when to start. A lot of my clients are the seniors, are the juniors who are going into the college application process. Mm -hmm. We have to have an overhaul mind shift of mm -hmm. high schools mm -hmm. and middle schools preparing their, their, their children, preparing the parents for the college application, application process, which should start no later than the eighth grade year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really shouldn't, because even when you look at it, there's some high schools, at least in Maryland, where I live, where students can test and opt into a specific program because a school, a high school specializes for music, for theater, for science and technology, you can opt into some certain programs. So if you're going to a high school for a specific program, uh -huh. then you should also take your college application process the same way, right? Their colleges are not created equal. There's some schools that are made for political science or that are specialized in political science. Some schools that are specialized in engineering. Some schools are specialized in business administration. You should go to those schools. You should apply to the schools that align with what you're looking to right. do. Right, right. Because theoretically, that positions you better for getting a job afterwards. 100%. I, know, I know with law school, for example, where you went to law school made a big difference in how easy it was, you know, for you to find a job after to this day. That's right. still applicable to this day. Right. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. So I help parents and their student, their children understand what is it that I really want to do. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a simply a simple strategy call that we have a one hour strategy call. But the whole process, I tell my students and my parents should be a six week process, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a six week process is from identification to applying mm -hmm. to concluding because a lot of students linger on this process of, I need to figure out what I want to study. I need to figure out where I should apply. Oh, I have until March 1st. I'm going to submit it February uh, 28th. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about, yeah. you know, cause one of the things that a lot of parents and students don't think about even is not just the application process, but the college entrance exams, like the ACT and mm -hmm. SAT, and making sure that they've taken that, you know, early enough to be able to actually, um, you know, apply for, you know, to have, to have that as part of the application process. Because yep. I, I, I remember, and this was, uh, you know, pro probably a rare situation, but I remember there was a student uh, that I knew that, you know, her parents didn't go to college. She didn't know anything about it. You know, they didn't have this experience and she had applied to a community college and was able to get in based on, you know, her GPA and everything. And she got to community college and they were getting ready to put her in all remedial classes because she had never taken the ACT. So, and, and it was just like, wow. wow, how did she get through this whole process? And nobody caught that she had not taken this critical test because mm -hmm. um, you know, the community college system is going to be a little bit different in terms of of their of of their entrance uh, process. But yeah. she didn't even know to take it. So instead of her starting school in the fall, she had to sit out a semester, take the ACT, and then she came back. I think the next semester where she could actually enroll in classes that were going to go towards her college uh to her towards his associate degree you know at the community college but you know it's just kind of you know students having this critical and crucial knowledge about what it takes to actually be ready to go to school yep yeah so i i know you know my company i don't necessarily focus on the sat and the act because there are so many different programs out there who prep students for right. it and you know kaplan being one of the the, the biggest ones they have created such a great platform with the courses they have, but they also have tools that if you can't afford to take a course, you can at least get a book mm -hmm. and study through the book. That's one thing. That's what I did personally, mm -hmm. where I got the, the tools that I needed and I did the work on the be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. There are some children that are not motivated to do that. So they do mm -hmm. need the course and they need the hands on. They need the hand holding. Right. And parents need to know their children. That's right. where a parent needs to know their You need to know how your children learn. Right, right. And, and I don't think 11th grade is too early right. to know. That's, you should know by then, you yeah. know, right. that's reality. Every child learns differently. Every child performs differently. Every child reacts differently. Mm -hmm. By 16, 17, right before you're sending, all, sending, sending them away from you, out of your house, 
you should know as a parent how your children learn. But what I will say is that students um, should definitely take this time to use mm-hmm. to get to know the SAT and the ACT because there's some schools that allow for you to get a bonus or a scholarship. Mm-hmm. But you do well on the PSAT. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you do well, you can get like a things like a thousand dollar book scholarship, something minor. But when you do well, especially it depending up. on, it adds up. Right. It and once I know I'm, I know I'm going off, um, off the grade since she said that. But a lot of students nowadays have to understand that scholarships are becoming more and more competitive, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of them think that they're going to have the, they're going to be as lucky as I was and get the Gates, get the Coca Cola, get the Dell, get the. Um, Jack can't cook scholarships that are out there and you get a, a huge large sum of money mm-hmm. because scholarships have become so competitive over the years. Mm-hmm. Students and parents alike need to understand that it's possible that your child may have 50 scholarships of smaller scholarships that will add up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, what is that? The average number of applications you would say that a lot of the students that you work with actually apply for average number of scholarships. Mm-hmm. I say don't apply to anything less than 25. Mm-hmm. Ah, so 25 scholarships. Because if yeah. you think about it, if it's 25 $1,000 scholarships, that's $25,000. I mean, you mm-hmm. know. So, yeah. Oh, that's, wow. Yeah. That can be a semester. Some schools, that can be a year. Mm-hmm. Right. Because so one no thing that a lot of students... I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's it. So, so yeah, I hope y'all hear that. No less than 25 applications, mm-hmm. which is why starting early is key. Very key. And you also have to keep in mind that you're not only competing with students in your school, you're competing nationally mm-hmm. and in some cases internationally because there's some children who are born in the States who are raised abroad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So you're, you're competing with everybody from all over. Don't ever think that you are <laughs> the only one. Yeah. You know, that you're indisposable. No, there's, yeah. there's people, there's someone everywhere. Right. Because, you know, and you mentioned something, too. You talked about, you know, the fact that scholarships and sales have become very competitive Mm -hmm. because I know, like, you know, when I applied for school eons ago, you know, basically, if you had a high ACT score and a high GPA, you were pretty much guaranteed to get a scholarship. So, Mm -hmm. like my I had a full ride uh, my freshman and sophomore year. And then I changed schools and uh, I ended up having to apply for some scholarships later. But um, but is that the case now where, you know, students who have high GPAs and high uh, ACT or, or SAT scores are going to are they going to be more likely to get scholarships than others? Or are there a lot of different uh, factors that apply? So many different factors, so many different factors. It's not as easy. Oh, get good grades and you'll get a scholarship. It's not that simple anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was ever that simple, but it was, since I have gone through the college application process, just for the mere fact that people have great stories to tell. Mm-hmm. For instance, there was a girl in one of the Carolinas, I can't remember which at the top of my head right now, who was a sophomore in college, got really sick mm-hmm. um, to the point of death mm-hmm. where she was in the hospital, but she asked her teachers, please keep continue to give me my coursework. I'll do the work. And was doing the work, did projects from her hospital bed. Mm. Yeah. She used that story as one of her college essays. Guess what? Got it. Yeah. And got scholarships. Yeah. And got scholarships. Yeah. And um, I don't think she was a bad student, but that story alone. Right. Forget her grades. Well, her grades aside. Perseverance and everything as well. I mean, come on. That's determination. Yeah. That's resiliency. So she she did very well. So those yeah. stories, those moments that you that you that you're building throughout high school are ne- necessary. Mm-hmm. And that's one reason why I tell my students, get involved, yeah. get involved, get involved in your school and mm-hmm. your church and mm-hmm. your community, wherever it is, get involved, let people know your name. Yes. So, you know, you said don't apply for, uh, you recommend that they apply for no less than 25 scholarships. Mm-hmm. How long does it take to actually complete one on average, you know, and what's usually involved? Is it just literally filling out a form? You know, what's involved in actually getting these scholarships? Every child is different. Some students can fill it out in a night. Some can fill it out in a week, Mm -hmm. you know, and it depends on your mindset because if you know that I need to go to college and I need to get somebody else to pay for it, Mm -hmm. guess what? Your drive is going to be more focused than someone who says, oh, mom and dad has it. Yeah. Mom and dad, mom and dad. Are gonna yeah. 
you know, don't be lazy children. Let's see. Uh oh, because I'm still here. <laughs> I think. Let me see. Let me check out and see what's going on. We're just having all kind of technical difficulties. Let's see. Okay, so I think it is just me. Yeah, because now she's frozen, but I'm still here. <laughs> so um, you're freezing. Okay, I'm all right. So are you? I don't know which one of us is having difficulties, but <laughs> uh, we we are experiencing those. Uh, so, but one of the things that I do want to, you know, just get parents to think about uh, and 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 really summing all of this up you know first of all start early the best thing to start with is having just the conversation around college itself where do they want to go what do they think Dr. Stephanie, about? you're frozen okay i'm frozen okay all right i think she was frozen i don't know if i'm still on here or not because i'm trying to watch and see let's see here I'm going to see who is still on. Okay. All right. I'm just checking it out to see. Okay. So I think it's just me on here. We lost, we lost out of BC, but as I was just kind of wrapping up, you know, is to make sure that as parents, you're having a conversation early on with your students about whether they want to go to school what it is they think they may want to do. And the key is exposing them to the different career paths so that you're not paying for them to figure it out once they get to college. So that was the big thing. Uh, the second thing is, you know, having that conversation early. Middle school is the time to start having that conversation. Don't wait until um, until it is uh, until they're juniors or seniors, because the conversation should have started a lot longer. I'm just giving up, giving a summary here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the next thing is making sure that, you know, you, you are really honest about the finances and really yes. honest about what it costs to go to school, the school that you're interested in. Because, you know, in some cases, there may not be a huge quality difference, say, between a state school and a private school. And in, in mm -hmm. some instances, there are. And you really need to be... Have, a, have an honest conversation about that, you know, what is the value of your degree? Because it does matter sometimes for certain yeah. industries and for certain career paths. And then, uh, you know, in getting into the actual process is, you know, recognizing that scholarships are extremely competitive. So you need to start early and you need to apply for no less than 25. So we're looking at a minimum of 25 hours, let's just say, if it only if it only takes an hour, but if you're completing the millennial scholarship, the Gates um, uh, scholarship, for example, that could take 25 hours all by itself. <laughs> so, so, you know, those are just some key things to think about as you're getting ready to prepare your students to go off to college. Or if you have nieces and nephews and you need to help out with this is to make sure that they understand that this is indeed a process. And just like anything else, got they, the students have to be the CEOs of their lives too. Mm -hmm. come up with that plan, that strategy, work with a team and execute it. So I just yes. wanted to give you uh, just a few moments to just close out and just share with anything. Because I think you have a I know you have a TEDx talk coming up. You've got some other programs and things coming up. Why don't you share with everyone what do you have coming up as well as how they can get in touch with you? Yes, thank you very much. So this Saturday, I actually have my virtual conference, my second annual virtual conference, the Cash for College virtual conference, where you can just go to cashforcollege.co, cashforcollege.co to register. It is a $97 investment. And one thing I try to teach my children is that, and my parents, is that you have to invest in order for you to yield your benefits, right? Whether it's investing in time, investing in action, investing in finances, you have to invest invest into your own life and in your own future. So that is cashforcollege.co. Please um, register to, to join us. We have great speakers. We'll be talking about how to select a major in college. Mm -hmm. We'll be speaking about building your own confidence and resume while in high school. Mm -hmm. 
the parent plus loans, the pros and cons about it. The reality of it is some students will have loans. Mm -hmm. Some will have loans. So how do you deal with it? Parents, should you be taking out the loan on behalf of your children? Should you, should you let them take it out themselves? Mm -hmm. And of course, we'll be talking about parent and parental involvement and the college application process is process and how to earn cash for college. The name of the, the conference. So this is the second year. One testimonial that I have from last year's conference, which always touched my heart every time I think about it. One young lady joined last year. She was nervous about being on the conference, but she said she took notes on everything that was said. Mm -hmm. Long story short, she ended up getting admitted into Columbia University all the way from Mississippi. Mississippi. Right. Yes, from Mississippi. And she said, I did, she was like, I did not know that I could, I could get into Columbia, let alone an Ivy League. She wanted to go to Vanderbilt, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Vanderbilt. But she got into a better school, you guys. Mm -hmm. And not only did she get in, she got a scholarship. Right. And not only did she get a scholarship, she got a stipend. They were paying for her to come up to New York um, for a summer program. Uh -huh. And she was getting a stipend. And, but they also were paying for her transportation. I bring this up to say that you never know what's out there until you actually apply yourself. Mm -hmm. and you put yourself out there. So I want more students to graduate school debt-free. I want more students to be focused on what they're doing and getting clarification that they need so that they can live the lives of their dreams. So mm -hmm. I have that coming up on Saturday and I have my TEDx talk next Thursday, September 27th in Wilmington, Delaware, titled yeah. Education for All. So I hope you guys will watch. Yes, well, because I know I participated in the TEDx talk in Wilmington two years ago, but it was mm -hmm. the, the women, TEDx uh, women, Yes, in Wilson, Delaware. It was that is an awesome. Uh, um, Ajit, who is the organizer, yes. is like the the master of TEDx organization. I mean, he is awesome. So you're really gonna have a great experience. I'm awesome. I'm so excited. That's awesome. You're to gonna hear. have a great experience. So I'm looking forward to seeing it because I know that you'll be able to post that later on. Yes. Um, once once the TEDx conference is is completed, but y'all make sure that you go to cashforcollege.co. I've got the the website up there because remember it's just a small investment but you are investing in the opportunity to be able to get your student a full ride for college cash yes. for college you're not guaranteed but you definitely guaranteed you won't get it if you don't make the effort so make sure <laughs> that you um, work with a professional because this is something she's not only done for herself but has done for several students over the years and helping them to get cash for college so that they did not have to pay or you don't have to pay their parents did not have to pay out of pocket so out of yeah. it is always 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 such a pleasure to connect with you and i know we're gonna we're gonna connect a little bit more later on but i just want to thank you so much for joining us and My just absolute want, pleasure yes and just want you to just give some uh, final closing remarks and give us a contact of, of how they get in contact with you other than registering for cashforcollege.co how can they find you so that they can tap into this awesome resource yes yeah, so five closing remarks um i will say parents discover your children's gifts early mm -hmm. um, help nurture those gifts three make sure your child is being receptive if they're not being receptive that's the indication of you that something's broken in the system something's mm -hmm. broken in the process that you're going through mm -hmm. figure out where they're not aligning where they're not connecting so that you can be on the same page with them at the same spot uh four be invested be committed you know a, a child is very especially a teenager i'll say a teenager is very um skeptical or withholding of their emotions and their feelings. But when you're consistent and you're present, they're appreciated more than you know. Five, you can get in contact with me and have me work with you or your child and or your child through at abc dot, dot up, excuse me, at abc at upliftology.co. That is at abc, my first name at upliftology.co. Or you can simply go to upliftology.co and you can connect with me there. All right, I'm trying to get this up to out of BC at upliftology.co. .co. Yes. And I hope I have, because I don't have my glasses on. Out of BC at, uh, I think I have it on here, correct? Okay. Do I? Yes. If you know it, then I know it. Yeah, Let me okay. see. Out of, out of BC at upliftology. 
Uh, I got one. I got one too many O's in there. Wait a minute. But anyway, I'm gonna take it down because I spelled it wrong. But it's out of BC at Upliftology. <laughs> no, up to leftology. That's not what it is. Upliftology.co. I just want to thank you so much for joining. And it has been thank my you for having to me. Have you in the C suite and just stick around because we're gonna have our, our little post C post C suite conversation <laughs> in a few minutes. But I just do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I just want to thank everyone for joining me here in the C-suite and conversations from the C-suite, Girlfriend's Guide to Being a CEO. It is always a pleasure to be around, but you know what? It is not about just the conversation. The conversation, the power of the conversation begins when you do something with it. Because remember here, we want you to Feel something, learn something, and do something. So make sure that you are making those CEO moves. So you know the power is in your moves. So make sure that you are, don't just uh, talk about it, be about it, but don't wait. Wait broke the scale. Remember CEOs make it happen. They just don't wait around for it to happen. So remember your life is the product of your choices choose to be the CEO of your life. I'm Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes, and it's been my pleasure to have a conversation here with you in the C-Suite. Be sure to go to csuite.tv, csuitewomen.tv, csuitewomen.tv to get the past episodes, and this episode will be there as well. So again, that's csuitewomen.tv. Thank you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in the C-suite.